Well, to discuss the legacy of Mama Zondeni Veronica Sabukwe and the role she played during and after the formation of the PAC, together with his late hus her late husband, rather Robert Sabukwe, we're joined in studio by uh, PAC President Naria Smoloto, also joined by the chairwoman for the Pan Africanist Women Organization, Mama Amanko Kumulefe. And on the phone line, we're joined by the African centered historian and executive member of the Black House Collective Works, who works closely with the Sabukwe family and the Robert Mangalisa Sobukwe Trust, Atando Sipuye. A very good evening to you all and thank you very much for joining us. Evening to you and to the viewers down there. Let me start with you, Mama Mulefe. Just talk to us about your experience of Mama Sobukwe. Uh, first of all, I'd like to correct my surname. It's not Mulefe, it's Molete. Molete. Thank you, Mama. Molete. Thank you, Mama. Uh, my experience of working with Mama Sobukwe is that of working with the mother of Azania. Mam Zondeni was the mother of Azania. She was a true epitome of an African woman. You know when the struggle started, the strategy was that the men must go out, go there, and be arrested. But the women have to be there to keep the home fires burning and to keep the flame of the struggle burning because they were the ones that were responsible for teaching the children about the struggle, what we as African people face, the struggles we face in our daily lives, and how to go about to face our daily lives. Mm -hmm. So when you look and reflect on such people, people like Mama Sobukwe, you think about such. These were women who were not afraid to be women. They were not fighting their role of being women. If I'm to put it in Setswana. The nation is a nation because of a woman. And uh, Mr. Molotto, then let's speak about her, her role in the PAC, not only uh, during the struggle period, but even post, you know, democracy times, she still had an impact within the party. What role did she play? Yes, first and foremost, uh, we are saddened uh, by her passing, but we did have an opportunity to, to meet with her and spend a day with her recently. And uh, we were very inspired uh, by uh, memory. She still remember very well uh, Alexander Soetu and all the places that uh, she went there. But um, here we are talking of um, a pillar of strength to the late president, Robert Mangale Sosobogo. She was a leader in her own right from the days when she was the leader of the, uh, of the mm -hmm. nurses in that particular college. So he met she met uh, Robert Mangalu Sosobukwe in that environment. And since then, throughout the tribulations, she remained very firm, strong, uh, through the difficulties. Now, it is that difficulties and great perseverance that continue to inspire us and continue to propel us uh, to the new heights. Now, it is um, the inspiration that, uh, in interaction with her, uh, we continue to, to, to get uh, and the last time we were with her, uh, as the leadership, uh, I led the leadership of the PAC. The, we spent a day, full day on Mother's Day, uh, sharing. She was loving. She was um, uh, very, very happy to be with the leadership. But she kept on ask, uh, saying one thing, that Lizom Vala Lisa, Vala Lisa, all the time. And we said, no, we are not here for that. So. And she, she was really inspiring, and, uh, and uh, she was, um, uh, despite the fact that uh, she was becoming more weaker and weaker physically, but uh, spiritually and mentally, she remained very strong. So she participated throughout. Her role was never kept out and highlighted, mm -hmm. particularly by the media. She's hardly known, uh, but the role she has played is immense. And uh, uh, what she went through, during the struggle and even after the struggle, mm. because we still believe as the PSC, she was not accorded 
um, what the status and the honor she deserved throughout, given what she went through. Mm. Now, today we see people thinking that this freedom, uh, it is just fallen from heaven. It is came on its own. There are those people like uh, Mama Veronuga Sobukwe who contributed with their lives uh, and with everything. Well, let's just also hear from Utando Sipuyo. Good evening to you, Utando. Thank you for joining us. How would you describe who Mama Sobukwe is? Good evening, and thank you so much for this uh, opportunity. Indeed, I would first start by saying um, the great African boobab tree has fallen. And uh, I extend uh, my deepest condolences to both the Sobukwe and the Mate families, as Mama Sobukwe has now transcended and joined the realm of the ancestors. I would like to pay my special condolences to her children, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, as well as her friends and colleagues in the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania. And uh, I, I certainly think that um, I would also like to take this opportunity to speak on O and Veronica Sobukwe and say that she was one of the most defiant and fearless icons of the struggle against racism, white supremacy in our country. And she fought valiantly and silently and steadily against the apartheid state apparatus. And indeed, she epitomized the dictum of the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania, which says, save, suffer, and sacrifice. Umama Zondeni Veronica Sobuko was born of uh, farming parents, uh, Kate Mate and Spini Mate in Freyheit in KwaZulu Natal. And indeed, as um, uh, Mr. Narias Moloto has stated, she had her first experiences and encounters and direct confrontations with racism and the apartheid state and police at a very early age. And uh, consistently throughout her life, she has been challenging ruthless authority and calling for justice on numerous occasions throughout her life. And I do know that uh, one prominent story around her activism is the story around her leadership of the nurses' strike uh, at the game at Victoria Hospital. But further than that, um, Mama Sobukwe uh, was also, although this is largely not told, but she was one of the founding members within the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania. And uh, um, she, her, her younger sister, I think this is an important point to also mention, was a woman called uh, Florence Ribeiro. Florence Ribeiro was married to... Um, uh, Dr. Fabian Ribeiro. And uh, Dr. Fabian Ribeiro and Florence Ribeiro were assassinated in the 1980s for their activism using their prof nursing and um, the medical profession, assisting black people in the township who were, you know, injured by the security forces. And both Fabian Ribeiro and um, uh, Florence Ribeiro were very supportive of Mama Sobukwe. They uh, went to Robben Island with her a number of times visiting Sobukwe when he was incarcerated under the draconian Sobukwe clause. Um, they got married on June uh, the 6th in 1954, and they had four children, Umili Swa Sobukwe, Udinilesi Sobukwe, and the twins, Udalinjebo and Titanisi Sobukwe. And I think also I, it's important that I state that um, even... Um, during the time of the Sharpville Langa massacre, Mama Sobukwe was well prepared for the consequences of the PAC's positive action campaign against the past laws. And with dignity and with a head raised high, she was willing to suffer in humility and sacrifice her life for the restoration of uh, African dignity for the return of the land to the indigenous people and for the vision of a liberated Azania. So this is what I would say about this indomitable woman, a, an ordinary woman, a grandmother, what we would call in Sikosa, Isikukukaz, you know, who, who, who housed a number of liberation struggle stalwarts of the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania and uh, the, uh, during the apartheid time as well as even um, in the post-so-called uh, uh, apartheid time. 
a number of incarcerated APLA prisoners. Today, Mama Sobuko has consistently raised and spoken on their plight, although um, largely silenced on the margin. Well, just coming back to studio, that's actually quite a lot of a, a bit of background and history into what she did. Um, Mama Lete, in terms of uh, celebrating her while she was still alive, I mean, uh, Umis Anarius actually mentioned that he doesn't feel that um, enough was done to honor her. What should have been done? And now that she's passed on, what more can be done? Uh, you know, what should have been done, first of all, is this. Mama Subuku was staying in Karafreinet. We were in, unfortunately, she passed away when we, the women in the PAC, were in the process of, of getting somebody, an elderly person, to go and stay with her. Because, you know, in old age, generally what really makes them more ill is when they don't have company, companionship. Mm -hmm. So we were, had gotten a woman to go and stay with her who would be her companion, and then we would be paying her on a monthly basis. And we were trying to push the Department of Military Veterans to actually also pick up part of that bill. And unfortunately, before this could be actualized, she passed on. And we were also planning on going to spend a, a weekend with her to celebrate and you know that she turned 91 yes at the end of july mm -hmm. so we wanted to spend that day with her in honor of her 91 years and to show that the pc does care for oh, its wow. elderly mm. well, we, 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 you know we could have done more mm. we could have pushed more but it's never too late for those that are still remaining this is, this is a program that the women in the PC are now busy working on, that we take care of our elderly. And what more can be done then uh, within the women of the PAC to actually, um, you know, let her legacy live on and some of the values that she stood for and taught in the, in the, in the, in the Women's League of the PAC? Is to pass on the legacy to our younger women. Our younger, you know, the moral fiber of society has, is now really, really messed up. Now we need to start teaching our children the lessons that we learned culturally and otherwise that we learned from these women. For, like I said when I started to say that that was a woman. Putting it in Setswana, one asa loisi mudi muka kore ibi amudi rile mosadi. She was proud to be a woman. As we say, mangwa na utwara tipa kamobokali. You know, normally, it is the women that make up the home. It is the women that are the backbone of society. But nowadays, when you look at what is happening, women have forgotten their role. They are now chasing after what, I don't know, I would call them shadows, because they believe, some of them believe that they are, uh, they are fighting to be equal to men. You cannot be equal when you are not the same. Mm -hmm. We are made differently. The only thing is for us to be able to use the gifts that God has given us more effectively. Be the best of you. Be the best of you. So, Mr. Malato, what, what then should be done, not only by the PAC now that she's passed on, but also by government, the ruling government, to honor her memory, to honor her? Yes, we, we are celebrating the, um, her life. We, we draw inspiration. Uh, there are few uh, women of, of her caliber. And uh, we will continue to re reflect on her life from now on. And uh, probably also teach the young people that uh, you can only go far for, uh, by starting from where you are and begin to know what you want. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are people who inspired us. Mm -hmm. That don't focus on what others are doing. Focus on your program, know your goal, stretch and focus, remain there. But uh, insofar as the role of the government, we have uh, written um, uh, to the presidency this, uh, this morning. They've responded quite positively. We are requesting that uh, she be buried, uh, given a provincial a special uh, funeral uh, by the government. And uh, they, they, there's positive response so far. I think it's been, it's been considered. Uh, obviously, the cost will be high, 
Um, we had also an opportunity to visit. She has already had uh, the grave um, next to, to the husband. is done. So I don't think that we are talking of uh, many things in that regard. Mm -hmm. So what we are talking is that how do we remembering her uh, starting now until the day of the funeral. Yes, ma'am. Another thing that I'm think that I'm thinking about is that we also because she, you know she was a trained nurse. Yes. Now the, you look at the profession, the nursing profession as it is today, and the nursing profession as it was when she started being a nurse, when it was a calling, it was not just a job. Mm. We need to start training our children to start looking at these professions as callings, not as just jobs, because. The services that we are getting from the current crop of nurses is not the same as the one that we got from the crop of her, leg, uh, of her time. Now we need to start t uh, naming one of the hospitals after her and start training our children in the basic way that they were trained. Let them view it as a calling, mm -hmm. not just as a job. Perhaps even naming a certain okay. scholarship after her and for people that want to study nursing. Even have a scholarship to that effect. Yes. Mm -hmm. now, Tando, how do you think that Tumama should be remembered? Um, you know, certainly I do think that uh, the passing of Mama Sobukwe is an indictment on the conscience of uh, really a, a heartless nation that relegated, that had relegated Mama into obscurity and non-existence in her life. And I do feel uh, certain is any honors um, that um, come now, particularly from those in leadership and in the state, that they bestow on Mamsubukwe right now would be opportunistic and artificial and empty gestures. And see why. Um, um, earlier this year, um, the Black House Collective, a civil society organization in Soweto, wrote a letter and nominated Mama Sobukwe to receive the highest order in the country, recognizing her for her contribution. And this was following a tribute lecture, an inaugural tribute lecture that had been organized last year. And um, it actually, one had been planned for this year as well, on the 7th of uh, September, at the Valley University of Technology. And uh, the order, the government, Instead of giving Mama Sobukwe the highest uh, honor in the nation, they awarded her the order of Lutuli in silver. Uh, this was through the efforts of a, a civil society organization and young people who, who called on our government to recognize Mama Sobukwe. So it was not a gesture coming from the government. I do think we need to state that. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, um, through the efforts of the Black House Collective, working in partnership with the Sobukwe family and the Sobukwe Trust, the Vice University of Technology was also preparing to confer an honorary doctorate on Mama Sobukwe on the 8th of September this year. And uh, the, in fact, the Value Investment of Technology has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Sobukwe Trust, and they will be instituting a Robert and Veronica Sobukwe nursing scholarship uh, a project is currently underway to write a biography of Mama Sobukwe and, and tell her own life story. And so uh, there are a number of ways in which the Sobukwe family, the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania, as well as uh, ordinary citizens and civil society groups such as the Black House have been doing in honoring and celebrating Mama Sobukwe. And um, uh, while she had remained silenced and ignored by the nation. And so I do certainly want to strongly say that this is an indictment on us all, the, the media, um, uh, the practitioners, academics, and so forth, as to why have we remained silent until now. Mm -hmm. And so those are uh, those are my are my feelings about how we should honor Mama Sobukwe. And in honoring her, I would say that let us remain uh, true to, to the principles that she valued, her humility, her humbleness, her, her loveliness. Mama Sobuk, the world that she was in Midland Hospital, she was at a public hospital uh, with about seven other ordinary women from Fafrainet. She was not in a private hospital in consensus. A 
any member of the public could access her. This was a humble, a generous, and, and, and very lowly uh, mother of, of, of Azania, mother, you know, of our nation. And so I do certainly think that in honoring her, let us be true and not give any artificial uh, gestures uh, and opportunistic gestures uh, in celebrating her life. Well, thank you very much to you, Tando, and to our guests in the studio for coming in tonight and for honoring the memory of Umama Sobukwe. May her mm -hmm. soul rest in peace. It is time now for a short break. We're back with more news after that, so do stay with us.